So let me tell you about Iman. Iman grew up in Somalia, then in 1972, when she was just 17, the war broke out, so she and her family moved to Kenya. Iman was a university student in Nairobi when she was discovered by a photographer, and she agreed to be photographed in exchange for $6,000, the cost of her tuition. Now, the pictures turned out great. A few months later, Iman agreed to move to New York City, and almost instantly, well, she was a star. Walking the runways, doing magazine cover shots. In fact, she became the first African to be on the cover of Vogue. And you know how it works in modeling, right? If the designers love you, well, you got a shot. She was a favorite of Yves Saint Laurent, Versace, Calvin Klein, and Donna Karen. Like many models, never mind just taking them pictures, she wanted to act, and in 1985, had a small role in a film called Out of Africa. We've got to get you to a hospital and get you some proper care. I'm being cared for properly. Four years later, she quit modeling, moved to Hollywood, appeared in L.A. Story, and, hello, Star Trek VI. He wants your obedience to the Brotherhood of Aliens. He's got it. Oh, and in 1992, she got married to some guy named David Bowie. That same year, Iman went back to Somalia, which had been ravaged by war and famine, but she wanted to show another side of her country, the culture, the music, and the hope. Since then, she's created Iman Cosmetics for women of color, and she became a global ambassador for Keep a Child Alive, an African AIDS charity. Last season, she appeared on Project Runway. This season, Iman is hosting Project Runway Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, Iman. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to see you. Thank you. Project Runway Canada. Uh, you're hosting this show, and I wondered for you, tough decision to get back in front of the camera, back in the spotlight in this kind of role. Yeah, it was uh, kind of scary, but there were, um, the stars aligned itself because it was being shot in the summer. And school was closed, mm -hmm. so my seven-year-old could come with me. But you just wanted a break from your family, didn't I, you? Really, I wanted not to cook for David Bowie anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted room service. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this, but uh, you probably could hire somebody to do that for you. I know, but I have this uh, notion that it's so easy in New York for either to have a chef or order in all the time. Mm -hmm. So there is really no sense of life, family life. So I like to be in the kitchen, cook while my daughter plays, and you know, and Have Bo you... serenades me. No, he doesn't. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> tin machine stuff or a different era? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no tin machine. <laughs> but did you, were you always like that? Were you required that sort of relationship with family and, and that connection to real life? Or did you go away from it for a while? And, and did oh, you miss honey, it? Honey, I, I, when I arrived in America, Right into Studio 54 days. You know, when, it, when they talk about these young girls now, rehab and all this, yeah. I fr really feel sorry for them because now that there's paparazzi. In my day, there was no paparazzi. So you could get into a lot of trouble without anybody knowing. <laughs> <laughs> but I imagine that you did. I and I did, yes, yeah. of course I did. I was 18 years old <laughs> in New York. But you came from a very different place. You're not like some girl that they found in Iowa somewhere. I mean, you left your country to another country and then came here, and it was under much different circumstances. Yes, I actually was, uh, came from a poor family. And ten, when I was 10, my father became an ambassador. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had a very privileged life. I used to be taken to school and chauffeur driven. So, but in five years, there was a coup in my country and, uh, and overnight we became refugees. So we fled the country, Somalia, and walked with just the clothes on our back, by foot, with nothing, absolutely nothing. How old were you when you did that walk? Uh, 15. That'll make you the woman you are, won't it? Yes, it does, and quickly. Quickly. The, the, the Project Runway Canada thing, what I wondered is, like obviously very different scenario from where you started, but when you see these people who are trying to break in, you watch the whole experience, you see them from a perspective that you understand perhaps all too well. Absolutely. But the funny part is that it's a double-edged sword now, because they become, like on this show, they could literally become household names overnight. Yeah. And to forget that there is hard work that comes with it and just feel and believe in the hype, so to speak, yeah. uh, it will be their downfall. Did that you, will be their downfall. Did that ever happen to you? Were you walking around going, I I'm believe your mom? You. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, yeah. I'm the shit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can say whatever you and want. Then, and then some young girl comes in and takes your place. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's always a young girl. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's such an incredibly competitive industry on that it level. Is. It is. But, uh, but what it makes... 
the, the people who have really, uh, uh, who have a sense of like, uh, this is a business, mm -hmm. and how to learn very early how you become the product. Don't wait for the job to come to you. You create the job. Uh, those are the only ones who survive in the business. Uh, the, the Cindy Crawford, Linda Evangelista, uh, Tyra Banks, right. Heidi Klum. Well, well, Tyra sort of come, came back into her show, but all those other ones you mentioned uh, very gracefully walked away and never came back. Yes, like they've done exactly what I did, which it is like, for example, in terms of like uh, uh, modeling. I have not modeled since I stopped modeling in 1989, mm -hmm. and I have not been to a fashion show since then. Uh, and you have to divorce yourself because they don't take you seriously at all because you're always are the model. Yeah. So nobody takes it seriously. I became a, a CEO of Iman Cosmetics and nobody took me seriously. When, when you're a supermodel and you walk the runway and everybody knows who you are and they love you and there's a certain confidence that comes with that, like you said, you think you're the shit. Yeah. When you walk into a situation where people don't take you seriously, I mean, that has got to be frustrating on a very different level for you. Yeah, and especially as a woman, because usually you're not taken seriously well, because a, you're a model and a woman. And you're a black woman. And, a, and, a, and that's another story, yes. We, uh, you know, <laughs> which is interesting is that um, a couple of weeks ago you started to get involved again in this, and, and I heard you say something when you, when you first came into this industry, you didn't want to be the black model, but now you, you're okay with that title. Exactly. You did your homework. Well, but, <laughs> well we hope so. You did, you did yeah. Uh, the funny part is that in 2007, there is less black models on the runway in New York Fashion, uh, Fashion Week and Milan Fashion Week than it has ever been, to the point that the New York Times had to write about and the Washington Post had to write about the lack of black models on the runways. Why is that? Do we know? Um, I think there is uh, the designers feel that the, the clothes are more important than than the person. And so when they want to create a look, like for example, they say things like as stupid as like, like about makeup, uh, uh, pale is in. Well, then what am I? I'm not in, you know? So they, they make these grand gestures, but it is inherently, it's not only African American or black models, it's Latinas, Asians, they're non-existent on the runways. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so there was a panel discussion that I was invited to, and, and that's where it really came, uh, it really came from. Which it was when I started in 1975, uh, and I used to get insulted when people called me, oh, she's a beautiful black model, because I didn't want to be labeled a black model, I wanted just to be labeled as a, black, uh, as a, as a model. Mm -hmm. Now, 2007, I understand what it means, because young black models and young black girls, kids, out there need that to hear that. They sure. need to hear it, because I find that uh, photography is such a powerful tool. You're involved with charities around the world, um, yes. obviously very close to your, to your home in Africa, in the different parts of Africa, but I wonder when you see a lot of celebrities and famous, you know, people getting involved now with what goes on in Africa, if you yes. sit back and see it from a very different place. Yes, I do, and I did, I did voice it in a couple of ways. When I created the campaign, I Am African for Keep a Child Alive, which mm -hmm. I am a global ambassador for. By the way, Keep a Child Alive, it is an organization that uh, provides the ARV drugs for children and families that mm -hmm. are affected with AIDS. AIDS, is not, it has changed the way we live and love forever. Till, of course, there is a cure for it. But it, it's not like a death sentence here in the West anymore. People ha like diabetes mm -hmm. have a healthy, long life as long as they, they take their medication. Mm -hmm. In Africa, it's not possible because of the price. So I wanted to be involved with a small organization that didn't have bureaucracy, very small, that so that the money that you raise actually goes to the, cha to, the to the grant itself. But also, I the I have a little bit of an argument, which as much as I appreciate, and really I want people to understand, I appreciate the Westerners who are going to adopt children in Africa. But my real concern is that those orphans really what we need is to save their mothers and fathers so that they can take their care of their own children. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You go home every day uh, and you have this discussion with your family. Uh, yes, I do take that, that work I take home. You do take yeah. home. Because my daughter is a very privileged child and I want her to know that there is more to, to the world than, than what she actually sees. Yeah, growing up, the, you know, the daughter of a supermodel and the thin white duke. Yes. Um, <laughs> there, you know, it's, uh, they're not going to see the world that you saw or even that David saw when he was young. Absolutely. The, the funny thing is that her name is Alexandria Zahra Jones. Mm -hmm. And um, 
and she never heard about Bowie. So one day there was this huge billboard and it said David Bowie and there's a picture of him. So she's asking me, <laughs> why is it called David well, Bowie? I David said, Jordan. oh, that's his stage name. What's the stage name? Uh, go ask him. <laughs> Why does he have a stage name? Because the guy in the monkeys had the same name as <laughs> exactly. your dad, right? <laughs> exactly. But so she's not, uh, she's Alexandria Jones. I don't want mm. her to be an extension of us. Yeah. I want her to be her own person. But also I want her to know about what's going on, uh, you know, in the world. Do, when you talk to, uh, I mean, your family back home and, you, and obviously you still have lots of connections back home, do they see on the ground the, the positive or negative impact of the attention that's being paid there now in the pop culture world? Yes, it is uh, uh, in, in Africa. Yeah, the attention is good. Because I, I, and I believe exactly what with Bono, you know, attention is good. Uh, and, and people always say to me, well, you know, some celebrities have their hidden agendas. <laughs> Bring it on. You know, I mean, I'd rather have somebody who does something that, it, that, doesn't, that doesn't do anything. Yeah. I just say, not on my watch. Not on my watch. Please come back again when you come to Canada. I would love to. Great to see you. Love to. Come on, everybody. Thank you. Nice to see you. Stick around. Lots more to come on the program. The hour will be right back. Next up, uh, Hillary Doyle comes by with something that looks like a bullet on wheels, uh, with pedals.